Oh hey guys, and welcome to the fucking booty base, and welcome to one of the first ever videos that is on the Glucaroos YouTube channel. Now, I'm down here at the booty base, however, my gym is closed and I'm probably assuming that yours is as well. So you're probably feeling a little bit stuck with all of these home workouts, thinking to yourself, oh well golly gee, it's just not going to be the same as training at the gym because I don't have challenging enough exercises. Well, that definitely is an issue for a lot of of us right now, but let me tell you just a little more fucking something, alrighty. I trained down here last week at the booty base, and I thought to myself, I'm gonna put myself in the shoes of everybody else who's stuck at home. I'm very lucky to have access to all of this amazing equipment down here still because, well, I pretty much live here. But you don't. So I wanted to come up with a whole bunch of different exercise variations that you could try that are still gonna be very challenging and still gonna allow you to be able to take your muscle to a place of fatigue or even very close to failure because that's what we really need to be doing if we wanna be maintaining and even potentially gaining muscle while we don't have access to all of the equipment and all of the weight which we normally would. Now, does it mean being a little bit creative? Yes. Does it mean stepping out of your comfort zone and trying new things? Yes. Does it mean you got me here to help you every, every single step of the way? More fucking yes. So, without further ado, let's get to the five exercises that I did with minimal equipment, only using bands, towels, body weight, etc., that you can do at home to still make sure you're keeping your body gains. Exercise number one. We are gonna be coming through and roasting those quads and killing those glutes. And we've got two different rep range variations for you ladies as well. We're gonna be doing a TRX pistol squat, okay? Now whenever we take ourselves onto a single leg movement, we're automati automatically gonna be making things harder because we don't have to rely on both legs for our strength, so any single leg variation is gonna be challenging. And TRX pistol squats, or pistol squats in themselves, are extremely, extremely challenging. You're lifting your entire motherfucking body weight with just one leg. Now, when I did this in my workout, I did two different variations. I did an unweighted variation where I had assistance, and then I also did a weighted variation where I had some additional dumbbells and I was holding on to. For the lighter work, I worked for 20 reps. And you'll see in the video that those last five reps were really challenging and really struggling because I kept that constant tension the whole way through and I kept that tension on my muscle the entire time. Now, when I did my alternate variation and I added some weight, you'll see that I was struggling to get only eight to 10 reps. And I was legitimately almost at failure because I was slowing the tempo down, I was adding a pause, and I was also adding some additional weight. Now, here's what the exercise actually looks like. I've got a TRX here, and at the end I'm gonna show you ways that you can make this work without a TRX. So, if you're gonna be going for the constant tension variation, you can hold on, either with two hands, one hand, doesn't really matter. I like holding on just like this. Now, we're going to be scooping down with our chest up nice and tall, holding on with only a minimal amount of help on the actual TRX or whatever you're holding on to. From here, we lower ourselves all the way down, let our leg come out in front, boom, and then push all the way up, driving through that heel. Now, in this constant tension variation, we're trying to keep the tension on the muscle, and we're trying to make sure that we're just moving up and down without our muscles actually locking out. So, we're going to be looking a little more like this. Down, up, and then straight back down into that next rep. Three, four. Now notice what I'm not doing, okay, is pulling myself up too much. You know why? It's because I'm fucking jacked, I'm fucking yoked. So you can use as much assistance as you need, but use the least amount of assistance that you need to make sure that your legs are actually doing the work and you're not just pulling yourself up like that. Now, a lot of you guys aren't gonna have a TRX available, so if you have a band, it's completely fine. You can literally use that instead, okay? Or if you don't have a band available, you can use a tear. Down, up, like so. If you don't have anything like that, you can literally just fucking hold on to something and give you that little bit of balance and then pull yourself up, alrighty? No fucking excuses, you can make something work, you just need to get creative. Now, if you want to make it harder, okay, first of all, a lot of people probably will find that challenging and probably can't get to more than 10 reps with that variation. However, if you are jacked, if you are yoked, and you want to add a little bit more weight, then the option's always here to grab a dumbbell or whatever you have at home, which can add a little bit of extra assistance, assistance, oh sorry, resistance, 
Still hold on. Now I like holding the opposite arm to the working leg, pulling up like so. And here, we're going to slow the tempo down and we're going to add a pause at the bottom. So coming all the way down, pause, and then push. All the way down, control, pause, and push. Just like so. Alrighty? So now, for me personally, I was fatiguing at a point where I was only at like eight to 10 reps, all righty? And that's what we wanna be doing, taking our muscles to a point of fatigue. It doesn't matter if it's 20 reps, it doesn't matter if it's 10 reps, we just wanna be making sure we're finding variations where those last three to four reps are really hard to perform, all righty? And you're taking your muscles to a point where you think to yourself, holy dooly, I don't know if I can get any more reps out, okay? So either of those variations are fantastic, give them a go, smash, bang, bang, and let's move on to the next one. Ride em, Sally! Ride em! <laughs> all right, all right, all right, we're coming on to exercise variation number two, and I, I'm not sorry at all for how weird and funky I am. Now, ladies, you can do this variation with or without a band, okay? But I'm gonna be showing and explaining it with the band because it is a harder variation, and if you have one, it's a really good way to make this exercise even harder than it already is with body weight. But I'll tell you what I'll do. Let's fuck this band off for a second and let me show you the body weight variation of our side lying clam raise, okay? Now this is a absolutely beautiful move to really target all through the upper outer portion of the glutes, okay? And we're working mainly through abduction here, okay? So what we're doing, laying down on the side, boom, boom, with our body nice and straight. What I like to do is tell people to imagine they just got hit in the gut. And they're gonna come back like this. Oh, shit! Okay, now from here, we wanna be thinking about driving all of our weight through this knee. A lot of people get this wrong, and they push through this ankle. That's a no-no, okay? Now, Jerry, I might need to get a bit of a different angle here because you're gonna be going full frontal in a moment. Holy smokes. Now, come over this way, come over this way. There we go. All right, now I'm gonna show you two different variations here. The easier one is gonna come first. From here, I have my elbow directly underneath the shoulder. I'm gonna be driving my hips up and forward like so. Up. Forward, and I'm also gonna lift that top leg, okay? And then as I come back down, I pretend I got punched in the gut again. Back, whoosh, and down. Pushing my knee in, boom. So my hips coming up, also pushing up and forward as I then come back and down to the ground. Now this leg at the moment, okay, is just twisting and rotating. I personally actually prefer this version, but the proper version is actually gonna be coming all the way up and getting maximal hip separation and driving that top leg all the way up and forward. Okay, ah, oh, now that really fucking burns and I haven't even put the band on yet. Now what's happening here, okay, is I'm driving this knee into the ground and driving this hip up. So I'm abducting and I'm pushing the entire fucking world away. Literally, planet Earth is your resistance. So what we're gonna be feeling is focusing on right through here on the upper outer portion of the glute and then if we externally rotate this leg, we'll get a little bit of action on the top of the glute as well. But if we really lift this one all the way up, now we're getting oosh, resistance against the world here, and then up by lifting this leg up and forward, we're hitting that top glute as well. Also, we're fighting into hip extension by pushing up and forward while we're abducting. So we're getting a little bit of double duty for the booty here. Now that is where the band comes in. So, normally, when I program these, I tell people that if you can get about 10 to 15 body weight reps without the band, then you're doing a pretty good job, okay? Now, we add the band on because now we're getting active resistance because it's all well and good to have that hip extension and push forward when you're just doing a body weight, but there's no actual resistance to try to pull your hips back. Now, we've got that. So we've got our loading coming from, oosh, Pushing against the world and firing up the glutes, lifting the leg up against gravity and hitting the upper glute, and the glutes now also having to actively push forward to resist that band trying to pull us back. And it makes it even harder. I fail at 10 reps with these. I'm gonna try to get a couple just to show you how fucking hard it is. Three, two, one, up, and then back, up, and back, up, and back. And try to have that brief pause every time. Oh, my glutes are on fire. Push. And back. So, ooh, as you can see, I'm not gonna do any more. I'm getting a little bit too sweaty, all right? As you can see, a very challenging variation, okay? And again, all you're gonna need is a band, hopefully something for your knees as well, because 
it is a lot of pressure that you are putting through your knees, so it's not hard to find a cushion or a pillow to keep yourself protected. And that right there is gonna be an absolutely awesome, awesome, awesome variation, okay? That's gonna get you fatigued or even at failure at around about that eight to 12 rep range. So enjoy it, and let's keep moving on. Okay, 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 okay. And number three, coming for you right now. Now, obviously, this one's probably gonna need you to have a TRX at home. I'm sorry, I couldn't actually think of a variation uh, that would mimic this exercise, other than if you have a Swiss ball available or if you have some sliders available. But unfortunately, I can't actually demonstrate that here at the booty base. Actually, yes, Dad. maybe I can. Jerry, what if you use the booty base logo? Look at that. Wait a second. Shit. I'm actually just thinking of this now. Let me get it down. This is live! Holy shit! <laughs> now, this is gonna work. Yeah, it is. Oh shit! I'm so smart! <laughs> Alright, well, this, okay, is gonna be the variation you can do if you don't have a TRX at home. So, what we're gonna be doing is getting this bloody towel or getting the socks on some tiles or whatever it might be, okay, digging your heels down, laying into our glute bridge position, pulling our heels back and in, and from here, we're getting active hip extension, so we're working our hamstrings and glutes to keep our hips up the entire time. Now, your hamstrings have two different functions. They extend the hips, and they also have knee flexion, so they drag those heels up and in. So you're really gonna feel this primarily in that mid to lower portion of the hamstrings, and if you can get about 15 to 20 constant tension reps of this, Holy smokes, let me tell you something, those hamstrings are gonna fire up like crazy. I put this in my Glute Guru Gang programming all the time because it's a fucking hectic exercise. Regardless of whether you're locked at home or not. Elbows to the ground, hips up, drive, oosh, oosh. And I like doing these for higher reps. Like so, bang, whew. Now, if you're feeling really, but actually I'll tell you what, if you need to regress and you wanna make it easier, you can just pull in, Push up and then slowly lower out like that. In, up, slowly lower out. I hope I'm not fucking ruining this side. No, I'm not. But if you want to make it even harder, if you feel like you're a badass, Jerry, I hope you can put some B-roll in of me actually uh, doing this variation as well with the TRX. This is goddamn hard. You can do it single leg as well. That's one. Two. Three. Ah, shit. That's all I got for me today. <laughs> Holy majority guacamole. Now, look, that was my impromptu little version you can do at home anywhere. If you do have a TRX, well, you know what, Jerry? Just play some B-roll and show them how you do it from the actual workout that I did, because I'm fucking cooked. I'm sweating, and I'm getting a little bit stanky. So let's keep moving on. And we are back with the band. <laughs> yes, we're back with the band. I'm sorry. I'm actually sorry this time. I'm a little bit inappropriate. Uh, call me the glitter group or nothing. Anyway, we're coming over now and we're doing, okay, an exercise variation that I give to my Glute Guru gang all the time. And a lot of the time we actually use it with the cable. And the only reason why I like to do that is because we can progressively overload it. We can, we can increase the amount of resistance that we're doing over time. Right now at home, it's going to be a little bit hard to make that happen. But a band variation of this exercise is fucking awesome because we're getting peak tension from the band when the glutes are at maximal peak activation. So this is actually pretty fucking hectic to either use as a glute activation, the glute burner, or anything just to get a lot of metabolic stress. It's also a single leg movement, so we're gonna be increasing all of our balance, all of our stability. So this is a fucking cracker exercise, again, regardless of whether you're at home or not. So, without further ado, let's get a bloody look at our single leg banded RDLs. Now, when you normally do a Romanian deadlift, okay, you're losing the weight, and we're going down and up, like so, okay? So the resistance is going against gravity, so we're getting a really big stretch on those glutes and hamstrings down here, but as we come up, 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 up towards the top, that weight's just pulling us down against gravity, and there's nothing actively working to make me have to feel like I need to squeeze my glutes forward, okay, like this, and while they're actually active and squeezed in under this tension at the top here. Really, at the end of RDL, I'm just kind of standing here and I can just relax my glutes and do nothing. Now, when I add a band to this, it's the complete opposite, okay? So we're getting less tension in the stretch position, but a lot more tension when we're active and squeezing, okay? So it's 
really, really good for activating those glutes. Now, I like holding either in the opposite hand, or you can hold with both hands, whatever works for you. Now, from here, we just go through our remaining deadlifts like we normally would. We get a really big stretch, pull through, and then really focus on squeezing, squeezing, squeezing. I also like Huey to drive this knee up, through, and under. And the reason why I like that is because it just promotes more of that posterior pelvic tilt at the end of the rep. Now that's something that the glutes do. Boom, boom. That right there. Not here, not this, this. So driving that knee up and through is going to help to promote that movement Oosh, towards the end of the rep. Now notice, I am pulling the band in just a little bit, but not really much. All the action is coming from hips, and it's coming from me stretching, pulling through, and squeezing. If you want to make it harder, take a few steps back. Boom, boom. If it's a little bit too hard, step a little bit closer. Boom, boom. You can't quite get your balance right away. Just do it as a B stance, like so. And what we're doing here is we're still pretty, putting pretty much all of our weight in this leg, and this back leg is here just for that loop stability. You can also do this as a lunge. So back, up, through, and squeeze. Back, up, squeeze. So again, because it's a band variation, I probably will be shooting for a little bit of a higher rep range. When I did this in my workout, I did three sets of 20, and that was really, really burning. It's not just good for the hamstring, for the glutes, it's also really good for hitting those upper hamstrings and getting a lot of tension in there as well. So, give it a go, and see how it goes. Alrighty guys, last exercise variation, and I wanted to save the best for last. This is an exercise that I give to my clients all the time that absolutely roasts their quads. And I never actually thought to do a banded before, but let me tell you something, doing a banded I think is even more brutal than doing it how I used to. So we can use these opportunities to explore new things and get fucking creative, alrighty? Now, rather than show you here and show the whole setup again, I actually did a fair few sets of this in my workout. So I'm gonna show you the exact setup, show you what a really fucking tough set looks like, and then at the end, I'll show you a few other variations of how you can make this work at home. Jerry, play that shit. You're gonna need a band, something to stand on to elevate your heels. You're gonna need to get creative. It's a banded hack squat. I do this a lot of time with my clients, and some of them can't even do a body weight. So, let's see how we go. We're gonna elevate our heels in a high heel stance, toes turned out, squat down, grab that band, and because I'm fucking tough ass, I'm gonna wrap my hands through like this. Now, the goal is to stay as upright as you can, keep those shoulder blades back, and come up like this. You get a lot of tension at the top of the rep. That's when those quads are gonna fucking burn. This is all quads. You wanna go constant tension, try to shoot for 20 reps. Three, two, motherfucking one, let's go. Legit. Ah, oh, shit. Now, sometimes, ah, oh, fuck. But if you don't have a band, if you don't have a band, try this. Wait, I just thought of this. Ah, oh, fuck. A lot of time, I get my clients just using a pole like this. Okay, and this is enough to roast them. Ah, oh, oh. like so. It's gonna help you stay back enough, and if you put some weight or something on the side there. I don't fucking have anything here. Get creative. At least you can start to weight the exercise. Notice the pole comes underneath my legs. Ah, fuck. Uh, and I'm staying upright. I'm not going forward like this. Oh, my fucking quads. Oh, fuck. Oh, Jerry. End it. End it. Holy fucking dooly. Let me just let you know, guys. I did that workout, I think it was last. Friday or Thursday, and the only quad exercises I did were the TRX pistol squats and this. And I shit you not, my quads today are still fucking burning, all right? I've got access to all this equipment, but I'm trying to use things that you can have access to at home as well. So no excuses, you just need to get creative, and you need to make it fucking work, and you need to make it fucking burn. And that's what I'm here for. Now, just quickly, as I mentioned, you don't, you might not have the setup to be able to do things like this, so I, uh, again, not quite often get my clients to just start with a pole because the weight of the pole is usually enough to get people started with this, especially if you've already done a couple other exercises. So I thought to myself, well, how can we weight things? You need to get something that's going to be pretty short because if you have big, like, 
bags or whatever it might be, when you come all the way down to the ground, it's going to touch. So just take a wider grip, okay? Whack some fucking shoes on there, fill some bottles up with sand, and then you've got enough weight to really get you to a fatiguing point, okay? Underneath like this. Now notice as well, with my technique, what I do when I'm holding this pole is I'm really keeping these shoulder blades retracted, keeping my chest upright, and trying to stay up and let the weight come underneath me and then come up like so. So I'm coming and I'm making it all from the knees. It's almost like I'm doing a leg extension. You're really gonna feel that burn. Oosh, down, up, shh, towards the top of the rack. Right in here. I also recommend keeping those toes out, shh, down. And you can even just go fucking body weight if you don't have anything. Honestly, guys. Or if you've got dumbbells, just fucking hold some dumbbells or something like this. You know what I'm saying? Boom, boom. But again, don't go down like that, all right? 100% upright. Knees go forward and then come up. Down, up, down, fuck, I'm, burning. I'm still burning, I told you I'm still sore. Now, just quickly, before I wrap this up, I also wanted to credit Eugene Teo, my boy, Eugene the Muscle Mechanic, or whatever he goes by, Jerry, link him in here, give him a shout out, because he's putting out some fantastic content as well, another one of my Aussie brothers down in Melbourne, that you all should be following as well. Now, I got the idea to do this banded from him, like I mentioned, I do this all the time with weight, but he has a video on his channel showing a setup you can do very similar to this. So Jerry, come over to the side here. And what we're gonna be doing, it's gonna be requiring a few more things to set up, but it does feel really good. Now, what we do is come over, squat down, bend up over the neck. Now, whoosh, a ball, a foam roller, whatever it might be, set up around about the mid back. And from here, grabbing some dumbbells, and we're going to be doing a one and a quarter variation of this. Now I really like this variation as well because we get to add additional tension down the bottom of the rep. And I'll show you what I mean. As I'm pressing up with this band, I get a lot of tension as I get higher and higher and higher and higher. But then as I come down all the way low, I don't get a lot of tension to slacken that band. So, Eugene recommends adding that additional quarter at the bottom just so we can get that extra tension from the weight that we're holding and from the gravity that we're working against. So now, oosh, it's a little bit more tension throughout a complete range of motion. And this feels really, really good. It also forces you to stay upright and forces you to keep that torso ooh, up and pushing against uh, the ball, the foam roller, do whatever you have. And trust me, that's a fucking pretty cool variation as well. So, oosh, shout out to my boy Eugene for hitting the, hitting the three on that one. Gee. All right, all right, all right. Well, I hope that you enjoyed all of those variations. I hope that you enjoyed what has been the first video that I've ever shot for YouTube. So I didn't even know what people say. Um, comment, like, subscribe, turn on the notification bell so you can keep on getting fucking hectic, cool content from me. Make sure that you're not sitting at home making excuses, whinging, crying, and sucking about everything that's going on around the world. Everyone's in the same situation, so you can make the most of it, and I can be here to make sure that you can. So, mwah, what's a good outro for, for, uh, for YouTube? Yo, guys, YouTube is schlubbin' a bit better than YouTube. I'll see you on the next one. Yeah. <laughs>